Previously on Doctor Who, all the monsters came back again, including the Daleks. No, not us, the hideous Daleks. I'm in a box. How on earth am I going to get out? With the sonic screwdriver, of course. If only they'd made the doors out of wood, then I would have never escaped. We've made many changes this season. We've abolished the next time trailer. Nope, we didn't do that. We changed the format from 13 45 minute episodes to... Nope, we didn't do that either. We've changed the TARDIS interior. Mmm, not really. We stopped reusing the same damn writers. Mark Gattis, Chris Chibnall, Gareth Roberts, Toby Whithouse. We changed from the Doctor always having just one girl companion to... Nope, that's the same. We changed the Doctor's dialogue so that it doesn't sound too much like David Tennant. Dialogue same. This time, the Doctor doesn't have a catchphrase. Yes, he does. We haven't brought back the Daleks. Twice. Murray Golds doesn't do the music anymore. Hang on. Wrong. My ears are still bleeding. All right then. What changes have we made? Well, don't you remember? We changed the title sequence and theme song. Sort of. worried about Amy. She keeps drawing things that don't exist. Like these stars, for instance. And this unicorn. And these fairies. Oh yes, that is a definite sign of madness, when you start drawing things which don't exist. Yes, just recently she drew this. Amy and Amy's boyfriend aren't the companions of the Doctor. The Doctor and Amy are the companions of the sonic screwdriver. So Doctor, why am I not a statue? You know, a shadow of the past like the other Romans, since like them, I'm just an Auton replica, not a time traveler like you guys. Why wasn't my fate the same as the other Romans? That's like asking, why don't I just use the Vortex Manipulator to solve all my problems, so that I never have to regenerate again? The Vortex Manipulator is so much better than the TARDIS. It's so good, it could replace the TARDIS. That is, if we weren't getting so much money from the TARDIS merchandising. Doctor, I've got the picture. The picture which reveals everything. We are using special effects that were easily done in the 60s. We're using all the CGI, which is the cheapest of all effects. But since I'm a producer, I'm complaining about how much it'll all cost. Oh no, the TARDIS is exploding again. Where's that cloister bell? It usually tolls about any old nonsense. Ah! By the way, guys, I hate repeats. Another wedding? Another rooftop? Another river song coming back again? Another thing that follows us over the course of the season? Another Christmas special? Another Doctor Who cries again bit? Another bringing back of an old monster? Say it. Mercy. Say it again. Mercy! Say it one more time. Temporal shift! Wait a minute. You don't have enough power to do that. That's right. Mercy! Have mercy! Pity! I have no understanding of the word. It is not registered in my vocabulary bank. Exterminate! Mercy! What have you become? Things keep repeating themselves. Things keep wadding themselves? Things keep repeating themselves. Repeating what? Things keep repeating themselves. Things keep repeating themselves. 
So things keep repeating. They keep repeating themselves. That's right. Things keep repeating themselves. You mean like right now? Yes. Things keep repeating themselves. All right, we, we heard, heard you the first time. time. Go on, River Song. Make like Captain Jack and disappear with the cheapest sound effects possible, only to return again. When I return, everything will change. Somehow, I doubt that. Of course I'm not going to get decent writers on the show. I'm going to make like Russell T. Davis and get substandard ones, so that I can outshine them all with the light from my script, which is as dim as the person who hired Russell T. Davis in the first place. Hey, Doctor. Yes, Amy? This is a pretty crappy storyline, isn't it? I know. Well, at least it isn't as crappy as it used to be when Russell T. Davis was in charge. Remember those days? Oh, look. We're in Cardiff again. And there's another alien threat to destroy humanity again. Why do we even bother going in the TARDIS in the first place? And we're just going to land in the exact same place in the exact same time again. I mean, where's all the budget money going? Why to that choreographer who tells all the actors how to walk, of course, and that limousine driver who has to drive Russell Davis back and forth, and to Julie Gardner, of course. Oh, and what does she do? Oh, she's just there to be sycophantic. What the hell is going on? It looks like we've appeared on a roof of a building. Again? Yes, again! Why are you shouting? Because there is an exclamation point after every word I say in the script! Doctor Who has so many genres to it. I mean, we're doing comedy? Jeff, don't just watch other people degrade women on the web. Do it yourself! We're doing thriller? Oh no. Aliens have come to destroy the human race again. Quick, let's run around while shouting really fast! We're doing science fiction? So, Doctor, how did you get out of the treacherous box that all your baddies put you in? Sonic screwdriver. And we're doing drama. <laughs> oh, Amy, I'm dying because you won't remember me. Some more science for you. <laughs> because I'm not worth remembering. <gasps> Some more comedy for you. So, Doctor, with the universe back to normal, What's stopping the baddies from devising another scenario and imprisoning you in something? Absolutely nothing, except for, of course, my magic screwdriver. Don't you mean your sonic screwdriver? Nope. I was referring to my magic screwdriver. Don't diss the magic! For Doctor Who, it's best to have as little continuity as possible. We also try as hard as we can to make every episode logically, scientifically, and most of all, historically, incorrect. Isn't that right, Churchill? Oh yes! Okay, Doctor. On my travels with you, I've been killed a couple of times, I've had to wait for my girlfriend for 2,000 years, only so that she can ask you for a good time in the bushes, on the day of our wedding, you insult me every chance you get, if you're not too busy running around from place to place, but I quite like you and I would like to continue our adventures. Make sense? Of course it makes sense. Amy's boyfriend, you're the most believable character of them all. I decided to include the same damn Muzak in every episode. You will now be Dalectized. <laughs> that M! That M has been following us around since the beginning of the season. It's on the Dalectized machine? It's on K9? It's on the Zontaran's shoes? And it was even on my bedroom wall from when I was a girl. What does it mean, Doctor? 
Let's go back in time and find out. Hmm, some of the wallpaper is coming away here. This is a bit like that scene in Blink. That was quite a good one, wasn't it? Especially the lack of tenant. I guess, if you can ignore all the massive plot holes. Plot holes? What do you mean? Well, just to name one, you know how Russell T. Davis cleverly made up the Doctor's intergalactic cell phone? Yes? Well, Billy got Sparrow's number before he went back in time to the Doctor. So why didn't he... I mean, why didn't I just phone her up? Instead of putting some Easter eggs on a DVD to communicate with her. Anyway, I totally understand, though. I mean, if you're a member of writers, like Stephen Moffat was, and the head has included the cell phone thing in so many episodes, who wouldn't resist making such a massive error? Just to prove a theory. What theory? The theory that the audience to the new Doctor Who is just as simple-minded as the audience of, say, Coronation Street. The BBC would like to apologise for that blatant insult to our viewers, who we may have little respect for, but who keep our food in our bellies and our Rolls Royces in our garages. Now just continue watching the noise box, because up next it's... Some Stupid Cooking Competition Show, followed by various other unscripted shows, Followed by Teenager Nonsense with a Supernatural Twist, a gardening show, a show about houses, then Life on Mars, a song by David Bowie about a detective who is trapped in the 1970s. Ooh, I like this song. Ooh, this song takes me back. Ooh, I haven't heard this song in years. Then a double bill of Ashes to Ashes, a song by David Bowie about another detective trapped this time in the 1980s. Ooh, I like this song. Ooh, this song takes me back. Ooh, I haven't heard this song in years. Now, if you'd like to hear more regional accent voiceovers, just watch some more television. Oh, hello. This is the part of the show where the cute panther tells it how it is. Now, um, ah. Uh-oh. I think I'll need my reading glasses. Ah, that's better. Well, you know how the original Doctors had a short description of what they were like. Like the second Doctor is also known as the Cosmic Hobo. Well, I've got some equally accurate descriptions of the new ones. The Eleventh Doctor. Dim-witted dodo brain. The Tenth Doctor. Cartoon character on steroids. The Ninth Doctor. Spitty, shouty, bad-acting git. Oh, look! Here's some descriptions of the crew. Stephen Moffat, contradicting, pedophilic, unoriginal nincompoop. Additional, annoying jackass. Russell T. Davis. Russell T. Davis. Russell T. Davis. In desperate need of a script editor, surrounded by sycophantic yes-men, Soap opera loving, ignorant, incompetent, talentless, tyrannical, fat headed freak! You know, Love and Monsters sums his reign of terror up, from the extremely childish, cartoony, running around, Scooby Doo fashion be beginning to the extremely inappropriate ending where we end up knowing about this couple's sex life. That's Russell T. Davis for you. Absolutely despicable. Oh, and now, um, good night, everyone. Stay tuned for next season where Rory might die again, Amy might die again, the Doctor might die again, but they'll all come back to life again. <laughs>